Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is the Old Testament in 88 days. We're on day 32. We'll be starting 2 Samuel and we're going to read chapters 1 through 11. So a lot to get into as per usual. So let's get started in 2 Samuel chapter 1. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had abode two days in Ziklag, it came even to pass on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent and earth upon his head. And so it was when he came to David that he fell to the earth and did obscience. And David said unto him, From whence comest thou? And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. David said unto him, How went to the matter? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered, That the people are fled from the battle, and many of the people also are fallen and dead, and Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. David said unto the young man that told him, How knowest thou that Saul and Jonathan his son be dead? The young man that told him said, As it happened by chance upon Mount Gilboa, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, and lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. And when he looked behind him, he saw me, and called unto me, and I answered, Here am I. And he said unto me, Who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. And he said unto me, Stand, I pray thee, upon me, and slay me, for anguish has come upon me, because my life is yet whole in me. So I stood upon him and slew him, because I was sure that he could not live after that he was fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head, and the bracelet that was on his arm, and I have brought them hither unto my Lord. Then David took hold on his clothes and rent them, and likewise all the men that were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until even for Saul and Jonathan his son, and for the people of Yahweh, and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. And David said unto the young man that told him, Whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger, and I am a Lekite. And David said unto him, How wast thou not afraid to stretch forth thine hand to destroy Yahweh's anointed? And David called one of the young men, and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him, that he died. David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thy head, for thy mouth hast testified against thee, saying, I have slain Yahweh's anointed. David lamented with his lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son, and he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Be behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. Another reference to the book of Jasher, that's interesting. The beauty of Israel is slain upon thy high places. How are the mighty fallen? Tell it not in Gath, publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Ye mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields or of offerings, for there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away, the shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. And Saul and jo Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their eyes, lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet, with other delights, who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of battle? O Jonathan, thou wast slain in thine high places. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of woman. How are the mighty fallen, and the weapons of war perished? Second Samuel 2 And it came to pass after this that David inquired of Yahweh, saying, Shall I go up into the city, any of the cities of Judah? And Yahweh said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whither shall I go up? And he said, Unto Hebron. So David went up thither, and two of his wives also, Ahneom the Jezreelitess, and Abigail and Nabal's wife, the Carmelite, and his men that were with him did David bring up every man with his household, and they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. 
And the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah, and they told David, saying, That the men of Jabesh Gilead were they that had buried Saul. And David sent messengers unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, and said unto them, Blessed be ye of Yahweh, that ye have showed this kindness unto your Lord, even unto Saul, and have buried him. And now Yahweh show kindness and truth unto you, and I also will requite you this kindness, because ye have done this thing. Therefore now let your hands be strengthened, and be ye valiant, for your master Saul is dead, and also the house of Judah have anointed me king over them. But Abner the son of Ner, captain of Saul's host, took Ibush Sheth, the son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim, and made him king over Gilead, and over the Asherites, and over Jezreel, and over Ephraim, and over Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and reigned two years, but the house of Judah followed David. In the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. And Abner the son of Ner and the servants of Ishbosheth the son of Saul went out from Mahanaim to Gibeon, and Joab the son of Zariah and the servants of David went out to meet together by the pool of Gibeon, and they sat down, the one on the one side of the pool and the other on the other side of the pool. And Abner said to Joab, Let the young men now arise and play before us. And Joab said, let them arise. There arose and went over by number twelve of Benjamin, which pertained to Ish-bosheth, the son of Saul, and twelve of the servants of David. And they caught every one his fellow by the head, and thrust his sword in his fellow's side, so they fell down together. Wherefore that place was called Elkath Hazurim, which is in Gibeon. And there was a very sore battle that day, and Abner was beaten in the men of Israel before the servants of David. And there were three sons of Zariah there, Joab, and Abishai, and Ashil. And Ashil was a light of foot as a wild rope. And Ashil pursued after Abner, and in going he turned not to the right hand nor to the left hand from following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Art thou Ashil? And he answered, I am. And Abner said unto him, Turn thee aside to the right hand, or to thy left, and lay thee hold on one of the young men, and take thee his armor. But Ashiel would not turn aside from following of him. And Abner said again to Ashiel, Turn thee aside from following me, wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? How then should I hold up my face to Joab thy brother? Howbeit he refused to turn aside, wherefore Abner with the hinder end of the spear smote him under the fifth rib, that the spear came out behind him, and he fell down there and died in the same place. And it came to pass that as many as came to the place where Ashahel fell down and died stood still. Joab also and Abishai pursued after Abner, and the sun went down when they were come to the hill of Amah that lieth before Gia, by the way of the wilderness of Gibeon. And the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together after Abner and began one troop and stood on the top of a hill. Then Abner called to Joab and said, Shall the sword devour forever? Knowest thou not that it will be bitterness in the latter end? How long shall it be then, ere thou bid the people return from following their brethren? And Joab said, As Elohim liveth, unless thou hast spoken, surely then in the morning the people had gone up, every one from following his brother. So Joab blew a trumpet, and all the people stood still and pursued after Israel no more, neither fought they any more. And Abner and his men walked all that night through the plain and passed over Jordan and went through Bithron and they came to Mahanaim. And Joab returned from following Abner and when he had gathered all the people together there lacked of David's servants nineteen men and Ashio. But the servants of David had smitten of Benjamin and Abner's men so that three hundred and threescore men died and they took up Ashael and buried him in the sepulchre of his father, which was in Bethlehem. And Joab and his men went all night, and they came to Hebron at the break of day. Second Samuel 3 Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, but David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. And unto David were sons born in Hebron, and the firstborn was Amnon of Ahionom the Jezreelitess, and the second Chalib of Abigail, the wife of Nabal the Carmelite, and the third, Absalom, of the son of Makkah, the daughter of Talmi, Talmai, king of Geshur. And the fourth, Adonijah, the son of Haggith. And the fifth, 
Shephathiah the son of Abital, and the sixth Ithrim by Egalai, David's wife. These were born of David in Hebron. And it came to pass, while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, that Abner made himself strong for the house of Saul. And Saul had a concubine, whose name was Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, and Ishbosheth said to Abner, Wherefore hast thou gone in unto my father's concubine? And, and was Abner very wroth for the words of Ishbosheth, and said, I am a dog's head, which against Judah do show kindness unto this this day unto the house of Saul thy father, to his brethren, and to his friends, and have not delivered thee into the hand of David, that thou cha chargest me today with a fault concerning this woman? So do Elohim to Abner, the more also except as Yahweh hath sworn to David, even so I do to him. To translate the kingdom of the house of Saul, and to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. And he could not answer Abner a word again, because he feared him. And Abner sent messengers to David on this behalf, saying, Whose is the land? Saying also, Make thy league with me, and behold, my hand shall be with thee, to bring about all Israel under thee. And he said, Well, I will make a league with thee, but one thing I require of thee, that is, thou shalt not see my face, except thou first bring Michal, Saul's daughter, when thou comest to see my face. And David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Deliver me my wife Michal, which I espoused to me for a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, even from Paltiel, the son of Laish. And her husband went with her along, weeping behind her to Baharim. <coughs> And said Abner unto him, Go, and he returned. And Abner had communication with the elders of Israel, saying, Ye sought for David in times past to be king over you. Now then do it, for Yahweh hath spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines, and out of the hand of all their enemies. And Abner also spake in the ears of Benjamin, and Abner went also to speak in the ears of David in Hebron, all that seemed good to Israel. And that seemed good to the whole house of Benjamin. So Abner came to David and he to Hebron, and twenty men with him. And Abner made, and David made Abner the men, and the men that were with him a feast. And Abner said unto David, I will arise and go, and will gather all Israel unto my lord the king, that they may make league with thee, and that thou mayest reign over all that to thine heart desireth. And David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. And behold, the servants of David and Job came from pursuing a troop, and brought in a great spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he was gone in peace. When Job and all the host that was with him were come, they told Job, saying, Abner the son of Ner come, came to the king, and he hath sent him away, and he is gone in peace. Then Joab came to the king and said, What hast thou done? Behold, Abner came unto thee. Why is it that thou hast sent him away? And he is quite gone. Thou knowest, Abner the son of Ner, that he came to deceive thee, and to know thy going out and thy coming in, and to know all that thou doest. And when Joab was come out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, which brought him again from the well of Sarah. But David knew it not, and when Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly, and smote him there under the fifth rib, that he died for the blood of Asael his brother. And afterward, when David heard it, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before Yahweh, forever from the blood of Abner the son of Ner. Let it rest on the head of Joab and on all his father's house, and let there not fail from the house of Joab one that hath an issue, or that is a leper, or that leaneth on a staff, or that falleth on the sword, or that lacketh bread. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, slew Abner, because he had slain their brother Ashael at Gibeon in the battle. And David said to Joab and to all the people that were with him, Rend your clothes, and gird you with sackcloth, and mourn before Abner. King David himself followed their bier. And they buried Abner in Hebron, and the king lifted up his voice and wept to the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. And the king lamented over Abner and said, Died Abner as a fool dieth. Thy hands were not bound, nor thy feet put into fetters, as a man falleth before wicked men, so that so fellest thou. And all the people wept again over him. And when all the people came to cause David to eat meat while it was yet day, David swore, saying, So do Elohim to me, and more also, if I taste bread or aught else till the sun be down. And all the people took notice of it, and it pleased them as whatsoever 
the king did please all the people. For all the people in all Israel understood that the day that it was not to the king to slay Abner the son of Ner. And the king said unto his servants, Now ye not, know ye not that there is a prince and a great man fallen this day in Israel? And I am this day weak, though anointed king. And these men, the sons of Zariah, be too hard for me. Yahweh shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. Second Samuel 4 And when Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, his hands were feeble, and all the Israelites were troubled. And Saul's son had two men that were captains of bands, and the name of one was Bana, and the name of the other was Rechab, the sons of Rimon, a Berothite, of the children of Benjamin, for Beeroth was also reckoned to Benjamin. And the Berothites fled to Gitaim, and were sojourners there unto this day. And Jonathan Saul's son had a son that was lame of his feet, and was five years old when the tidings of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his nurse took them up and fled, and it came to pass as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame, and his name was Mef Ishbosheth. The sons of Ramon and Bir the Berothite, Rechab and Bana, went and came out of the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth, who lay on the bed at noon, and they came thither into the midst of the house as though they would have fetched wheat. And they smote him under the fifth rib, and Rechab and Bana, his brothers, escaped. For when they came into the house, he lay on his bed in his bedchamber, and they smote him, and slew him, and beheaded him, and took his head, and got them away through the plain all night. And they brought the head of Ishbosheth unto David to Hebron, and said to the king, Behold the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, thine enemy, which sought thy life, and Yahweh hath avenged my lord the king this day of Saul and his seed. And David answered Rechab and Bana, his brother, the sons of Ramon, the Berothite, and said unto them, As Yahweh liveth, who hath redeemed my soul out of all adversary, adversity, when one told me, saying, Behold, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good tidings, I took hold of him and slew him in Ziklag, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings. How much more, when wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house upon his bed? Shall I not therefore now require his blood of your hand and take you away from the earth? David commanded his young men, and they slew them, and cut off their hands and their feet, and hanged them up over the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the sepulchre of Abner in Hebron. Second Samuel 5 Then came all the tribes of Israel to David and to Hebron, and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. And in, also in times past, when Saul was king over us, thou wast he that led us out and brought us in Israel. And Yahweh said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king in Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before Yahweh, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned thirty and three years over all Israel and Judah. In the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and lame, thou shalt not come hither, thinking David cannot come hither. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same city that the same is the city of David. David said on that day, Whosoever getteth up to the gutter and smiteth the Jebusites, and the lame and the blind that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Wherefore they said, The blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fort, and called it the city of David. And David built round about from Milo inward. And David went on and grew great, and Yahweh Elohim of hosts was with him. And Haram king of Tyr sent messengers to David, and cedar trees, and carpenters, and masons. And they built David a house. And David perceived that Yahweh had established him king over Israel, and that he hath exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. And David took him more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem after he was come from Hebron, and there were yet sons and daughters born to David. And these be the names of those that were born unto him in Jerusalem, Shammua and Shobab and Nathan and Solomon, Ibhar also and Eliashua and Nepheg and Japhia and Elishama and Eliadad and Da. Eliaphlet. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David, and David heard of it and went down to the hold. 
The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Ephraim, and David inquired of Yahweh, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? And Yahweh said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thine hand. David came to Baal-perazim, and David smote them there, and said, Yahweh hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Baal-perazim. And there they left their images, and David and his men burned them. And the Philistines came up yet again, and spread themselves in the valley of Ephraim. And when David inquired of Yahweh, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be when thou hearest the sound of it going up in the, the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir, stir thyself for thee, then shall the... Yahweh go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. David did so as Yahweh had commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gazer. Second Samuel 6 Again David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, thirty thousand. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Belial of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of Elohim whose name is called by the name of Yahweh of hosts that dwelt between the cherubims. And they set the ark of Elohim upon a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah, and Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of, of Elohim, and Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before Yahweh all, on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and psalteries, on timbrels, on cornets and cymbals. And when they came to Nachon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of Elohim and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. The anger of Yahweh was kindled against Uzzah, and Elohim smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of Elohim. And David was displeased because Yahweh had made a breach upon Uzzah, and he called the name of that place Perazah this day. David was afraid Yahweh that day, and said, How shall the ark of Yahweh come to me? So David would not remove the ark of Yahweh unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obedom the Gittite. And the ark of Yahweh continued in the house of Obedom the Gittite three months, and, the, and Yahweh blessed Obedom and all his household. And it was told King David, saying, Yahweh hath blessed the house of Obededom, and all that pertaineth unto him, because the ark of Elohim. So David went and brought up the ark of Elohim from the house of Obededom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they bare the ark of Yahweh had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. David danced before Yahweh with all his might, and David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of Yahweh was shouting and with the sound of a trumpet. And as the ark of Yahweh came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before Yahweh, and she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of Yahweh, and they set it in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before Yahweh. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of Yahweh of hosts. And he dealt among the people and even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well as the women as men, to every one a cake of bread as a good piece of flesh, and a flagon of wine, so all the people departed every one to his house. Then David returned to bless his household, and Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. David said unto Michal, It was before Yahweh which chose me before thy father, and before all his house, to appoint me ruler over the people of Yahweh, over Israel. Therefore I will play before Yahweh. I will yet be more vile than thus, and will be base in mine own sight, and of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. Therefore Michael, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. Second Samuel 7 And it came to pass, when the king sat in his house, and Yahweh had given him rest round about from all his enemies, 
that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now I dwell in the house of cedar, but the ark of Elohim dwelleth within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thine heart, for Yahweh is with thee. And it came to pass that night that the word of Yahweh came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith Yahweh, Shalt thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time I have brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but I have walked in the tent and in a tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? And therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, I took thee from the sheep caught from following the sheep to be ruler over my people over Israel. I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in the place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more, as before time. As since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also Yahweh tell thee that he will make thee an house, and when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. Then went King David in, and sat before Yahweh, and he said, Who am I, O Lord Elohim? And what is my house, that thou hast brought me hitherto? And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord Elohim. But thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come. And is this the manner of man, O Lord Elohim? What can David say more unto thee? For thou, Lord Elohim, knowest thy servant. For thy word's sake, according to thine own heart, thou hast done all these great things to make thy servant know them. Wherefore thou art great, O Yahweh Elohim. For there is none like thee, neither is there any Elohim beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like the people, thy people, even like Israel, whom Elohim went to redeem for people to himself, and to make him a name, and to do for you great things and terrible for thy land, before thy people, which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt, from the nations of their gods? For thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people Israel to be a people unto thee forever, and thou, Yahweh, art become their Elohim. And now, Yahweh, Elohim, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever, and do as thou hast said. And let thy name be magnified forever, saying, Yahweh of hosts is the Elohim over Israel, and let the house of thy servant David be established before thee. For thou, O Yahweh of hosts, Elohim of Israel, hast revealed to thy servant, saying, I will build thee a house. Therefore hath thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. And now, O Lord Elohim, thou art that Elohim, and thy words be true, and thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Therefore now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee. For thou, O Lord Elohim, hast spoken it, and with thy blessing let the house of thy servant be blessed forever. Second Samuel 8 And after this it came to pass that David smote the Philistines, and subdued them. And David took Meth the Gamma out of the hand of the Philistines. And he smote Moab and measured them with a line, casting them down to the ground. Even with two lines measured here he put to death, and with one full line kept to keep alive, and so the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. David smote also Hadazezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to recover his border at the river Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand chariots and seven hundred horsemen and twenty thousand footmen. And David hoed all the chariot horses, but reserved for them four hundred chariots. 
And when the Syrians of Damascus came to Sikor, Hadadezer, king of Zobah, David slew the Syrians to hunt two and twenty thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David and brought gifts. And Yahweh preserved David whithersoever he went. And David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Bata and from Barothai, cities of Hadadezer, King David took exceeding much brass. When Toy, king of Hamath, heard that David had smitten all the hosts of Hadadezer, then Toy sent Joram his son unto King David to salute him and to bless him because he had fought against Hadadezer and smited him. For Hadadezer had wars with Toy, and Joram brought him vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass, which also King David did dedicate unto Yahweh with the silver and gold that he had dedicated of all nations which should, which he subdued, of Syria and of Moab and of the children of, the, of Ammon and of the Philistines and of Amalek and of the spoil of Hadadezer son of Rehob king of Zobah. And David got him a name when he returned from smiting of the Syrians in the valley of salt, being 18,000 men. And he put garrisons in Edom throughout all Edom he put, put he garrisons. And all they of Edom became David's servants, and Yahweh preserved David whithersoever he went. David reigned over all Israel, and David executed judgment and justice unto all his people. And Joab the son of Jeriah, Zeriah was over the host, and Jehoshaphat the son of Aliud was recorder. And Zadok the son of Ahitub, and Amalek the son of Abiathar were priests, and Sariah was the scribe. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over the Cherethites and the Petholites and David's sons were chief rulers. 2 Samuel 9 And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show kindness of Elohim unto him. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amaliel, in Lodabar. Then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amaliel, from Lodabar. Now when Meph is Bosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertaineth to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits of them, that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded, his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Methabosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Methabosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Methabosheth. So Methabosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table, and was lame on both his feet. Second Samuel 10 and it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died, and Hanun his son reigned in his stead. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanun the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. The princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanun their lord, Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Hath not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city, and to spy it out, and to overthrow it? Wherefore Hanun took David's servants, and shaved off the one half of their beards, and cut off their garments in the middle, even to the buttocks, and sent them away. 
And they told it unto David, and he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they stank before David, the children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Betharab and the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 footmen, and the king of Makkah, 1,000 men, and of Ishtab, 12,000 men. And when David heard of it, he sent to Joab and all the host of the mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and put a battle in array, the entering of the gate, and the Syrians of Zobah, and of Rehob, and Ishtab, and Makkah, were by themselves in the field. When Joab saw that the front of the battle was against him before and behind, he chose of all the choice men of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of Abishai his brother, that he might put them in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. Be of good courage, and let us play the men for our people, and for the cities of our Elohim, and Yahweh do that which seemeth him good. And Joab drew nigh, and the people that were with him, unto the battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled, then fled they also before Abishai and entered into the city. So Joab returned from the children of Ammon and came to Jerusalem. And when the Syrians saw that they were smitten before Israel, they gathered themselves together, and had Azur sent and brought out of the Syrians that were beyond the river. And they came to Halam and Shobak, the captain of the host of Hadadarezer, went before them. And when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together and passed over Jordan and came to Helam, and the Syrians set themselves in array against David and fought with him. The Syrians fled from before Israel, and David slew the men of seven hundred chariots of the Syrians and forty thousand horsemen, and smote Shobach, the captain of their host, who died there. And when all the kings that were servants to Hadarezer saw that they were smitten before Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians feared to help the children of Ammon any more. Second Samuel 11 And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when the kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him in all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittites. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was coming to him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house. And there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down into his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why did, then didst not now not go down into thine house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark in Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife as thou livest? And as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and on the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his lord, but went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab, and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people, the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war. And charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matters of the war unto the king, and if it, if so be that the king's wrath arise, and he say unto thee, 
Wherefore approached ye so nigh into the city when ye did fight? Knew ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Abimelech the son of Jerubasheth? Did not a woman cast a piece of millstone upon him from the wall that he died in Thebes? Why went ye nigh at the wall? Then say thou, thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So the messenger went and came and showed David all that Joab had sent for him. And the messenger said unto David, Surely the men prevailed against us, and came out unto us in the field, and we were upon them even to the evening entering of the gate. And the shooters shot from the wall, off the wall, upon the servants, and some of the king's servants be dead. And thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. Then David said unto the messengers, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devoureth one as well as another. Make thy battle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife, and she bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased Yahweh. Yep. All right. Well, that's all we're going to do for today. We'll pick this up tomorrow, the rest of the story. So thanks for joining me. Hope you guys have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. And as always, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Take care. God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in him. Have trust in him. And wait upon him. And you'll never be sorry. We'll see you tomorrow, God willingly, with the rest of Second Samuel. Thanks again. See you later.